Thank you for tuning in to another episode of On the Red Carpet with Tick Podcast. Um, today we have Press Plays Asger Strand. Strand, Strand Pew. Strand Pew, correct. <laughs> it's like a city on the, on the, on the beach. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this guy is one of the brothers, I was told, um, that created Kalimba. Um, which is the puzzle platformer on the Xbox One. A lot of us have played and loved. Um, what inspired you to create Kilimba and come up with this kind of jazzy style of gameplay? I I think um, for almost all the games that we worked on, it's been very focused around a, a game mechanic that we really like and like we like toy around with and find interesting ways to work with. And so for Kalimba, it was. Uh, I think uh, there was uh, the the idea of having two characters with a single input. That was kind of like it sort of just happened by coincidence. I was uh, it was like a bedtime project for me, mm. <laughs> and I, I was uh, toying around and I made like a platforming character and I control D it, you know, duplicated it, and uh, and for some reason everything just kept on working. All the code was uh, <laughs> still working. <laughs> but, but both of them received uh, all the inputs, and I was like, "This is this is kind of interesting." Wow! And I I could uh, try and uh, stack them together, and then they could do the double jump. That's right. also just like he was just uh, grounded on top of uh, the bottom one, so he was able to jump from him. If that makes sense. Right. Right. <laughs> That's a really cool concept. Like we love all the colors, the dynamic of switching uh, between the reds and the blues and the different totems. Now. The art direction. It seems that you guys chose an art direction uh, with the totems and the beard that that had some type of, I guess you could say, um, Aztec aesthetic to it. Yeah. Did, did you guys draw inspiration from that? Yeah, yeah definitely. It was uh, um, my my input for that was mostly just like I really uh, liked the idea of uh, working with the geometric shapes. Right. For game. Uh, and that was kind of like my um, my dogma, my the, the thing that I I asked the the, the graphic artist uh, Tor Tor Leon, who's called to work with that. And then we have the theme about the the shaman lady and this kind of um, native thing going on. Right. In the in the theme, so so he he really liked the the South American uh, vibe uh, in graphic design and colors and all those things. It's very vibrant and uh, lively. No, it definitely is. I mean, the music behind it. Now, you said earlier, I'm sorry, you guys didn't hear this, but I had asked Asker if he worked on Max Curse of Brotherhood, and he said that he worked on the music, which, by the way, I loved in uh, Max Curse of Brotherhood, especially when you get chased by the big one-footed monster. Uh, when that tune kicks in, you know it's time to get running. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> Did you work on the music for Kalimba as well? I I did a little bit. Uh, some of the music in there is uh, uh, stuff that I did, uh, and a lot of the other music is uh, made by my good friend uh, and my uh, band uh, mate. Uh, uh, he's called Magnus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I I kind of worked uh, with the idea of uh, taking cumbia music, which is also a South American uh, style of music where. You have a very like a draggy beat right like it's it's kind of like a weird swing feeling in it and it, it just adds a, a nice flavor i think uh, to the whole style that it's not totally correct i like that in music right 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 so uh recently i heard that you guys are coming out with more content for kalimba it's supposed to be releasing soon or if it, if it hasn't released already yeah, it's oh, out now it's out now okay yeah. so what you know, as you guys go forward with Kalimba, do you guys plan on to continue to put new content out there? Or is there any plans to see a sequel, maybe with more totems, more colors, uh, you know, uh, more difficult puzzles, things like that? Have you thought about that? Uh, I hope so, to have the chance to... I think that we had a lot of ideas that uh, didn't make it into this game. And uh, definitely, right now, we don't really have anything planned for, for Kalimba. Okay. Uh, but um, like if, if the demand is there and uh, if people can see some like uh, opportunities with it, uh, like I would love to do more stuff with that. We love 
to talk about is how Microsoft is able to find talented uh, developers out there. And um, being that press play is now part of the Microsoft team, uh, were you there when they came and decided to bring you guys in to the, micro, uh, the, the Microsoft you know, house and make you guys yeah. one of the uh, companies? How did that work out? Ah, it's it's been great so far. Um, it's uh, like before we got uh, acquired. Uh huh. Um, I I have to say that I'm not. I'm just a em employee at the company. But <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really like. But but for me, it was just like it was nice uh, to get like there was a lot of more certainty. Right. I guess, say like the the pressure kind of got taken a little bit off our shoulders. Right. We didn't have to like uh, show uh, presentations every other month and all that. Like right. we we still have to like uh, prove the work that we do. Right. But it's uh, it's in another way that it's a bit more like there's a more trust in us. I think. Right. It's just nice. Right. Now, if you if you could come out with another game, uh, you know besides Kalimba, would you continue to do a platformers? Because right now, Press Play is known for these platforming puzzle games. Do you do you have any inside information on what could be the next project? Is it another platformer? Is it another um, new type of game that goes in a different direction? Well, um, yeah, it, it's, it's true that Press Play, like we really like our platformers games. <laughs> <laughs> And and for me especially, I, I really like. I think it's like a very pure form uh -huh. of, uh, of of game. Like you, it's 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 not about anything. It's, it's a little bit about other things, but the mo the focuses are like having the tight controls and like uh, it's just in front of you what you have to do and uh, you have to bring the skills if you know what I mean. Right, right. Uh, but but for the future, like we. Right now, we are working on uh, several different uh, small projects, and we have to figure out which one to take take on from here. Oh. That's not, I think it's really certain right now. Oh, so question: like when you work on smaller projects or you work on multiple projects, basically you guys kind of like come together, you brainstorm, you you put these projects out here. Maybe people present something, and then you choose one out of the bunch and just go for it. Um, this this situation that we're in right now is is kind of new for us. I think as as long as I've been at the company, we always had had something that we were working on, hmm. and, and somehow we there was always an idea that uh, got chosen to be like the the next project. But right now we are like in the process of the, like we I think we all really want the next game to be like really good, of course. But like we want to put some. Um, some um, some thought into like uh, really making a good decision right from the get go right so yeah yeah no I I completely agree I mean I loved Max I I thought it was um, it's something I didn't play before I remember when I first saw it I said to myself wow this is a really pretty game um and the the platforming obviously was pretty cool a pretty cool dynamic I'm I'm an older guy so. For me, it wasn't too difficult to figure certain things out. But you have others who kind of got stumped on it um, and things like that. And then you look at a game like Kalimba with the color dynamic, um, the totems, how you use them, uh, which direction you go, who goes first. <laughs> you know, um, the trial and error of, of moving and figuring out puzzles obviously is something that it seems Press Play is known for. Uh, which to me is, is a great thing because that's something that the Xbox platform it doesn't have and you guys bringing that dynamic to the platform is really cool so I, I really look forward to some of the games you guys got coming out but i think a lot of fans want to see you guys do something where it's not so much maybe about platforming it might be something else i don't want to say a shooter but maybe just a different type of um element of a game maybe an adventure game mm -hmm. I, I think you guys are really talented when it comes to art direction and um I guess you could say presentation and mm -hmm. quality of a game. So I will. I, I think it'd be really cool that if you guys did have a project in there that was kind of like an adventure game where you traveled across a land um, without any puzzles. You know, maybe you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. find items. I think that'd be a really cool dynamic. Yeah. 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 It it would be it would be fun to try out something else for sure. Right. Like, 
it it doesn't have to be like difficult uh, platforming games that we do, but it's just <laughs> what we've been doing so far. <laughs> right. No, of course I completely understand. Um. So you know. Tick podcast would be at E3, and a few of you guys, like you said, uh, would be at E3 as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to hanging out with them. But will you guys? Will you go to um, uh, Gamescom? Being that that's a little closer. Uh, Gamescom, I'm, I'm not. It's like uh, we are we are located in Denmark. Uh, I I don't know if everybody knows that. So it's like a very long journey for oh, us. Oh, to... so it's even as long as well. Okay. Uh, I but gotcha. but. Usually we go to these uh, things, at least some of us do. Right. So probably, yeah, but I, I don't really know the plans. Gotcha. That. Gotcha. Cool. So, um, obviously, right now, Press Play is a young studio. Um, a lot of fans feel that um, they love Matt's Curse of Brotherhood. And one of the things that they want to know, if you have any information on it, is that do you think... Uh, you know, because Max and the Magic Marker, you guys had the first game, and then you had Max Curse of Brotherhood, where he has this marker and everything is done with it. Do you think that they would, or you guys may decide to move away from the marker aspect of like him using it as a power tool and maybe do something else with Max, but still keep it in the world, it, you know, within that realm without using the Magic Marker, like Max and something else instead of Max and Curse of Brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh... Uh, that's that's been a topic. Uh, definitely, the the first Max Max and the Magic Marker was designed for the Wii U, right? Uh, where you have the the what's it called the Wii the mode. Wii mode. Mm -hmm. So you can you have like a pointer device, and and it worked really well in that game. For for the Curse of Brotherhood, it was like we really wanted to keep in the marker, in the game. But it's like it's a little bit more tricky to have a, a marker controlled with a, a with a joystick. It's not as uh, intuitive as a, as a pointing device, or if you're playing it on the iPad, it's like just drawing, and that's I think that's where it works the best. The, the Max and Magic Marker. So yeah, yeah, we talked about like the the magic the the marker doesn't have to be like a cursor, but it could be just like a, a magic thing that mm -hmm. you can. Have. Right, like something different. It doesn't have to be a marker. It can be a different ability um, that still helps them move through levels and things like that. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd be something different. And you can come up with different titles and multiple titles with just Starry Max. I think that'd be really cool um, as well. Now, Max hit games with gold. Um, and a lot of people picked up Max, you know, Curse of Brotherhood, which I think was really great for press play. I, I went out and bought it day one as soon as it came out because um, I just, I really liked the dynamic of it. Um, how has that affected you guys as far as like games with gold? Because I know that game, the games with gold is free. Um, so a lot of people pick those games up. Does that affect you guys in any type of way as far as financially? Or are you guys compensated for that? And do you think Limbo will go with games with gold eventually? Um, well, I've, I'm not really sure about the whole economics behind games with gold for, for like as how it's, how it's handled for us, but uh -huh. but I mean for me as a developer, it's like really cool that uh, that all these people get to play our game and we get a lot more feedback than if if, if it's just been uh, like hidden away in the store. Right. So so I I I, I really like it, but uh, I'm hoping somebody is making money of it so it doesn't. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I I I like it too. Um. I think that it it gives you guys a lot more exposure. Um, somebody who might not be willing to go out and pick the game up will say, hey, it's free. Why not? I'll try it. And then you come out with the next title. Boom. You have all these new sales because they really uh, like the first game. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll, we'll hook some people over uh, that way. Like, <laughs> I, I also like, I really, as a gamer myself, I really like to like get these offers uh, once a month. And some of the games I... I I like try once and it's not really for me and some of the games I didn't even know that and then I get hooked and like I think it's cool it's a good concept right um, a lot of people I'm not sure how Columba did um, as far as financials or how many people purchased it but I know that it got great ratings it yeah. got some really great ratings so that is definitely a project you should definitely be proud of um, one of the better uh, puzzle platformers out there um, so 
what goes into making the music? I know that you went into uh, saying that the South American style of music, whether it's a kalimba, what inspires you to make the music for Max Curse of Brotherhood? Um, yeah, for, for, for the curse, it was more, um, it didn't, it, like the, the, the whole vibe in the game is a little bit uh, Indiana Jones, uh, ex explore type, type of vibe. Right. So it, uh, I, it needed to be a little bit more like cinematic. Right. In a way, but I, I wanted it to keep it away. I didn't want like to sound like Indiana Jones, you know. But it, because I cannot like pull that off. <laughs> so I, actually, what I did was I, I wrote the music in my uh, in my computer, and then the band that I was talking about. I'm I'm in a band also, where where we have like um, different like the guitarists and the saxophonists and right. violinists and all that. And right. I had them play uh, the tunes. And recorded it in, and you know, layered it, and so it, it, it's got like the, the the human feel, right? Of composed music, and of course, I could do a lot of stuff afterwards, like uh, layering it on top of each other and putting in like uh, sound effects and all that. Right. Oh, that's really cool. Um, you know, I, I, I guess it's kind of I don't know. Usually, when you bring in outside people to do music for you, um, you know that you try to give them the direction. But having your own band do it for you is actually even cooler. I mean, I guess that's um, less money you guys have to kick out financially uh, because it's your own band at the same time, as well as it gives you guys exposure um, for your own music. You know, and and I, I trust these guys, and I know, like I can really communicate well with them. You know? Right, right, right. Right. Well, that's that's awesome. That's really, really awesome. Um, really like the direction press play is going. Can't wait to see what you guys have coming out at um, you know, E3. A lot of fans are looking forward to it. I mean, we're just really happy that you know Microsoft is investing in um, you know, big studios, small studios. It don't matter. It's just about finding talent and bringing new experiences to the Xbox One platform. Um, you know, before I get out of here, fans want to see what press play is going to do next. Um, and obviously we won't know that until E3 comes, but if you could make your next game, um, anything like off, off the top of your head, if you had leeway to be the executive producer of the next title, <laughs> what do you think you would create? Um, if you had that opportunity? <laughs> Okay, that's that's a difficult question. <laughs> like, <laughs> at the end, I I don't know. Like I, I I for me personally, I get a ton of ideas just all the time. But you know, it's a lot of the time the the idea is a lot better in the head. Right, and, right. And then you start prototyping it a bit, and uh, you come up with all these KVs in it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like something with the. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't come up with something on the spot. Sorry. You know what I think would be really cool? Being that you have a band, you should make a game that uses music. I think that'd be really, really sick. I think that being able to have a platformer that uses certain musical elements while you're playing the game to maybe solve puzzles, and then at the end you get a song or a tune while you're fighting the boss. That would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you notice in Kalimba that the, the pickups is actually tuned to the music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. We put in like a little small like things in there. Also, if if, if, if you don't move, the, the rhythm track of the music will stop. Oh, right. I do small remember that. Like that. Yeah, okay, cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Asker. I really appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to talk with you about Max, Curse of Brotherhood, and Kalimba. Uh, we hope that we get a Kalimba 2 with some really cool new music, some new totems, some new colors, and definitely some uh, difficult puzzles. And we really look forward to maybe seeing Max in a new setting. Um, you know, uh, maybe without the magic marker, uh, with some new abilities and a new platformer. And, and um, you know, hopefully we'll get you on the podcast again to chat more about what Press Play has in the plans after E3. And um, maybe we can do a a a, a uh, what is it game called? session, <laughs> right? Exactly, a game session. Yeah, yeah, because you know we have a, a pretty good following 
on Twitch, and we do a okay. lot of Twitch streams. So maybe we I, can I, do like a Kalimba giveaway to a few fans, and then you know have you on talking in a chat or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. I was looking forward to thinking about a prototype where you like uh, kick in some ideas and uh, we make it happen. Yeah, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> no, that would be definitely <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right, Asuka, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I hope to uh, talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks. All right, thank you.